All right, everyone, we are back and we are about to go through um, a little sneak preview on how we're going to do data analysis in this uh, lab. So one of the things that we should do is go to our lab on our Canvas site and let's go ahead and just download this whole thing, this XRD lab. Well, it prepares to download. We can kind of talk through the analysis. So the key thing is kind of the selection rules analysis, but we'll go through all of what's in this data file. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to see in my downloads, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to extract everything. So let's just extract this data file. And I'm going to keep in the downloads for now, but again, you can do what you want. And you can see we have lots of different kind of things here. Um, so we have some pictures in addition to our lab handout and all these things, some pictures, some data files, text files, and we have uh, basically uh, pictures, data files, and we have our Mathematica notebook. So let's go ahead and open this, and this is gonna be the notebook that we use for our kind of fingerprint lab. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read in raw data, and we're gonna plot it, visualize it, and then compare it to these five pictures. Now these five pictures are from the International Crystallographic Structure Database. I know, very fancy. Um, uh, very fancy uh, name there. But it's basically, an, it's a very, very expensive software um, that luckily um, I've used at previous places. Um, and it's a very, very expensive, but a very, very useful software that we can use to, um, basically this is where the, there's an international organization that collects XRD data and is kind of like our theoretical reference for the materials that we're gonna be investigating. So we wanna look at and compare these to figure out do they match our raw data and then the key thing here and you can kind of let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit um, let's zoom in here and we can see one of the key things is that the location of the peak in this um, I've removed what the actual material is obviously because otherwise it wouldn't be a fun lab but this gives us the HKL indices associated with the location of each peak so from these and these and again you can see there's certain patterns of peaks that appear and other peaks don't appear. Um, so from this, you should be able, with your selection rules and the materials that we're given, we should be able to identify what material we have. So let's start off with an example. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna look at material A. Um, there's only five, so you see we're given more data files than these five materials. So these are the five materials that we have to identify. So. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just paste in control paste this and I'm going to shift enter and I'm going to take shift enter and get a sneak peek about this data and it's always good to do this so you can kind of see where we want to extract the data from. So I see that I have two uh, intensity or two theta excuse me so our angle versus intensity so I probably want to start at the second row and extract everything here so I can do that extract from that second row down, and I can see my plot, which is nice. Um, one thing I can do right now is I can start to right click and get coordinates. So I see there's a peak here, I see there's a peak here, and you wanna be pretty accurate here. I'm doing this quickly just for, just to be quick. <laughs> so I'm gonna click right in the center of the peak. And then I can just, again, center in terms of like where the peak actually occurs. Click it here, click it here. And I can do Control-C, and I can paste basically where are the locations of those peaks. And you'll see why we're doing this in a second. And I'm just grabbing the X coordinate, so I don't care about the Y. And the reason is, well, I care about the Y philosophically, but not a uh, bad joke. Um, so once you've imported this, and once you've cleaned up essentially the data set, um, and actually we have U1 here, but you can kind of plot it otherwise, I can now, Actually, it's better to plot the, the cleaned up version. So we can go ahead and do this here, put this in here, and we can do shift enter, and we can see our data set. So this basically function, it just puts it in a nice plot, and then it's already reading in the X, the grid lines from our basically peak locations. So it's a good way you can kind of visually see this and then if you're preparing for your presentation, once you match the material, you could put the HKL indices next to each of the peaks. That would be a very nice um, addition. And then you can do that in um, PowerPoint and other programs. So 
we can now compare this material to the ones we see here. And we can look at the peak locations. So let's look at, let's see, is it in the material one? Uh, I don't think so. That's a lot, right? Like the peaks, I don't really see the 44 and 64. It doesn't look like that one. What about material two? Well, we do have a peak at 47, but again, it's, I don't, it's not showing, it's not matching. What about material four? Oh, there's a lot of peaks here and we're really not seeing all of those. Uh, what about, what about three? Three is interesting, but the problem is we don't have that peak at 50 that we see here. What about five? Let's see, let's bring this over. Well, we got a peak pretty uh, 44, good. 64, 81, 90, uh, 98. That looks good to me. All right, so we can go further with this. Um, so one of the things that we're gonna have to do is calculate lattice parameters and DHKL indices. So I can use this function, brag function, and we basically have all these values. We can pull in the value of our first peak. And again, we can just calculate this for the first peak. We don't need to do it for every single peak because again, we're looking for our lattice parameters very general for the material that we're working with. So you can look at the experimental value and then once you identify the material, you can actually correlate that. So I can go ahead and we can shift into this and I can see my D here and then we can, go, that's my inner splinter spacing. So I can just define that as UD1, and I could use my expression. Um, actually, before we do that, we now have to look at, okay, because to use and solve for my lattice parameter, I need my HKL indices. So we matched it with material five, so we can actually just go ahead and proceed with this calculation. So first peak has HKL indices of one, one, and zero. So you know it's, we know all the materials that we're working with are cubic. So I can actually go ahead and proceed with solving for my lattice parameter. So that's 289 approximately. So, but what material is this? Let's look at these peaks. So if we remember some of our selection rules, let's see, we had, what do all these peaks have in common? Well, they're not all odd or all even, but if I add these up, uh, basically, this is two, right? This is, if I add this one, two, this is two, this is four, this is four. So it's looking like, it's not like this combination of like, if all, if there, if H plus K plus L is odd or even, we get either nothing or, so it looks like if H plus K plus L because there, there's mixed here, there's evens and odds. But if H plus K plus L is even, we see something. If it's odd, I mean, we're not seeing any odd peaks either. So we can already cancel out like a NACL or CSCL stripe structure. So it looks like we're looking at a BCC material. Great. So if it's BCC, it's a BCC material, we have several candidates. Um, if we look back at our, oops. If we look back at our, oops, let's get rid of this guy. I shouldn't have gotten rid of that. But we know, we can, again, we've identified it. Material A, or, you know, mystery material A is going to be correlated to ICD-5. We also know that we have these candidates for BCC structures. So, one of the things we can do is simply, if we're kind of a little bit lazy, um, we can look at lattice parameter chromium. We can see it's about 291 picomoton. That's pretty, that's pretty close here. So that is a very strong candidate. Um, what are our other materials? And again, you can kind of cite these and then, you know, kind of show that. What about tungsten and molybdenum? So let's go back over here. This parameter. Tungsten. So that's 3.6, so that's, uh, uh, that's too big. That, that's too large too. 
So looks like chromium is a good candidate, but let's let's take a step further. We know, okay, so this is a BCC structure. So BCC, we know that for our BCC, our last parameter A is equal to four times R divided by square root of three. And we can solve that this is our A, and that's gonna be equal to BCC A. So we know now this is gonna be our atomic radii. So if we look at our periodic table, we look at it for chromium. And again, it may be off a little bit and you could always compare just to the last parameter itself. That's honestly sufficient. And then you can cite it and you can eliminate those, but we can see our metallic radii here. So let's get into chromium. Where are you? Chromium, chromium, where art thou chromium? There's chromium. So we see chromium's about 1.3. So again, we're, we're a little bit off, but again, molybdenum is no way, tungsten is no way. So again, that's pretty nice correlation. Um, so fantastic. So you can kind of compare both of those and looks like you got your first material. Thank you, Professor Steinwell, for the help on that. <laughs> just, just joking. Um, so yeah, you'll continue with this procedure. Um, identify the other materials, prove, derive, and show those selection rules. That's really the key aspect and show that in your presentation. And then, yeah, get ready for your oral presentation. Thanks. See you guys next time. See you all next time. Bye.